House Committee on Appropriations will come to order. Will the clerk please take attendance? Chair Whitworth? Here. Representatives O'Neill? Brixie? Hood? Brabeck? Here. Morse? Here. Curry? Here. Stekloff? Weiss? Here. Martis? Here. McKinney? Here. Menser? Here. Morgan? Here. Price? Here. Skaggs? Here. Snyder? Here. Wilson? Here. Leitner? Here. Bolin? Here. Green? Here. Slaw? Here. Beeson? Here. Horton? Here. Fink? Here. Cavett? Here. DeVore? Here. Coon? Here. Judy? Here. Steele? Here. Madam Chair, you have 27 members present. You do have a Thank you. Representative O'Neill moves to approve the minutes from our September 19th meeting. There being no objection, the minutes are approved. Representative O'Neill moves to excuse absent members. Without objection, the absent members will be excused from today's meeting. Today we'll take up several bills that implement the fiscal year 24 budget agreement that we didn't get to during yesterday's committee. We'll, we will be hearing from Bill Hamilton from the HFA on the first couple of bills on the agenda in, the, in an effort to um, get done with this on, a, on time. We will have Bill and all members of HFA testify on the, the bills that they will be testifying on. So right now, Bill will be doing two different bills. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good morning and members. So the first bill, I believe on your, the top of your packet is a bill to amend the Livestock Dealer Act. So your legislative analysis, the title Livestock Dealer License Fee Sunset Extension. So again, this is a bill to amend Public Act 284 of 1937. That's an act that provides for the licensing of livestock dealers. This is a regulatory licensing program administered by the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. And the bill, the Effectively, the bill, it's a uh, budget implementation bill. It lifts a sunset on the authority to collect licensing fees from October 1st, 2023. It extends that sunset to October 1st, 2027. The background information provides additional information on the program and how it operates. The total cost, cost of the program annually is approximately $84,000. The fee revenue generates approximately $23,000. And again, if the sunset is not lifted, the department would not have authority to collect these fees after October 1st. So that's the livestock dealer fee bill. And if you, uh, shall I go on to the mm -hmm. second bill? The second bill in your packet, the title at the top indicates food service establishment fees. This uh, House Bill 4989 would amend the food law to extend a sunset for certain food service licensing fees to December 31st, 2027. If the sunset is not extended or eliminate, eliminated, the authority to, to collect the fees would end on December 31st of this year. Again, this is a budget implementation bill. The, the budget assumes the continued authority to collect these fees by the Michigan Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. And the fees, excuse me, the fees generate approximately $843,000 each year. And if you flip to page two of the analysis, you see the different fees, uh, the amounts in the average annual revenue. And again, I available for questions. I, I guess that's the condensed summary of the, the bills. Thank you. Okay. We'll start with House Bill 4988 that was sponsored by Representative Martis. Are there any questions? Seeing no questions, Representative Martis moves to adopt the substitute H1 to House Bill 4988. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H1 substitute, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Stackoff? Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, yes. Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cavett, no. DeBoer, no. Coon, no. Judy, no. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H1 is adopted. Thank you. Representative O'Neill now moves to report House Bill 4988 with the recommendation as substitute H1. Will the clerk please call the roll? 
On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill, Brixie, yes. Hood, Brabeck, yes. Morris, yes. Curry, yes. Steckloff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cavett, no. DeBoer, no. Poon, no. Schutte, no. Steele. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The bill is reported as substitute H1. Thank you. We'll move on now to House Bill 4989, sponsored by Representative Martis, regarding the changes in the food law that um, Bill just talked about. Can you please do, does anyone have any questions? Seeing no further questions, Representative Martis moves to adopt substitute H3 to House Bill 4989. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H3 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill, Brixey, Hood, Brabeck, Morris, yeah. Hurry, yeah. Steckloff, yeah. Weiss, yeah. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Poon, no. Schutte, no. Steele. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H3 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Brixey moves to report House Bill 4989 with recommendation as substitute H3. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixey? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Coon, no. Schutte, no. Steele. No. Item chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 4989 is reported with recommendation as substitute H3. Thank you. Next, we'll take up House Bill 4990, sponsored by Representative Brabeck, making changes to the vehicle code. And we will also take up House Bill 4991, also sponsored by Representative Brabeck, that, changes to, that makes changes to the State Personal ID Act. Today, for these bills, we have Michael Knossen, Austin Scott, and Marcus Coffin available. And I'll invite all or one of them up here to be able to talk about these bills. Good morning, Madam Chair, Representatives, Michael Knossen. Uh, I'll be speaking to both the bills at once, 490 and uh, H2 and 4991H1. Uh, the bills do two main things. The first is extending the sunset on uh, many of the transaction service fees at Secretary of State branch offices. Nearly all of these uh, various fees, which can be seen in the table near the end of the uh, House Fiscal Summary, um, go to the Transportation Administration Collection Fund, or TAC Fund. This, uh, this comprises over half of the Department of State budget um, and supports their various vehicle and uh, driver services there. There are two other funds that uh, these fees go to. They are the Traffic Law Enforcement and Safety Fund, which goes to uh, Department of State Police for enforcing traffic laws, and also the Scrap Tire Regulatory Fund, which goes to the Department of uh, it, it goes to Eagle for uh, uh, cleaning up scrap tires. Uh, the second main thing that the bill does is to raise the fee on record lookup services at the Department of State or Secretary of State. Um, currently, the, the fees are uh, in statute authorized to be set at a market rate or by the legislature. The legislature has set the fees in boilerplate at $11 for the last several years. Uh, the bills would raise the fee from $11 to $15 this would bring in approximately $18.5 million in additional revenue annually. Um, this, is, uh, this would help alleviate the anticipated revenue shortfalls to the Department of State. Um, in prior years, there has been one-time appropriations of 
for three consecutive years of 18 million, 19 million, another 18 million to help supplement the revenue so that um, it covers all expenses. The fee increase would provide an ongoing revenue year to year to, to help cover that. And at the, at the back of the summary, there's a, a chart showing um, revenues compared to expenditures. Um, with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions on House Bill 4990? Seeing no further questions, Representative Brabeck moves to adopt substitute H2 to House Bill 4990. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H2 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Curry? Yes. Stackloff? Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Kuhn, no. Schutte, no. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H2 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Morse now moves to report House Bill 4990 with recommendation as a su Oh, sorry. Are there any amendments? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I do offer an amendment to uh, strike out the increase of $15 per record, maintaining the fee at $11 per record. This $15 uh, this increase represents a greater than 25% increase in a fee. Um, I am supportive of the sunset extension, which would allow us to have the Secretary of State's office um, actually justify the increase. Um, I feel that this bill, uh, we've paid a little bit of Russian roulette with it. We're taking it out of the TAC fund, now we're putting it back in. It's almost um, moving down a path that we're not really quite sure. Do we need the increase? What is it for? What's it gonna actually pay for? So. Uh, with that, I will move my amendment to maintain the fee at $11 per record. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to amend, Chair Whitworth? No. Representatives O'Neill? No. Brixie? No. Hood? Brabeck? No. Morse? No. Curry? No. Stackloff? No. Weiss? No. Martis? No. McKinney? No. Menser? No. Morgan? No. Price? No. Skaggs? No. Snyder? No. Wilson? No. Leitner, yes. Bolin, yes. Green, Slaw, yes. Beeson, yes. Horton, yes. Fink, yes. Cavett, yes. DeBoer, yes. Kuhn, yes. Schutte, yes. Steele. Yes. Madam Chair, you have 11 yeas, 16 nays, no pass. The amendment is not adopted. Thank you. Representative Morris now moves to report House Bill 4990 with recommendation as a substitute H2. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morris? Yes. Curry? Yes. Stackloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cavett? No. DeBoer? No. Kuhn? No. Schutte? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 10 nays, no pass. House Bill 4990 is reported with recommendation as substitute H2. Thank you. We now will take questions on House Bill 4991 that was sponsored by Representative Brabeck on the changes to the State Personal ID Act. Are there any questions? Seeing no further questions, Representative Brabeck moves to adopt substitute H1 to House Bill 4991. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H1 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill, Brixie, yes. Hood, Brabeck, yes. Morris, yes. Curry, yes. Stackloff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, no. Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cavett, no. DeBoer, no. Kuhn, no. Schutte, Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 10 nays, no pass. 
the H-1 is adopted. Okay. Representative Bolin is offering an amendment to House Bill 4991. Would you like to speak to your amendment? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, my amendment is to striking out the increased fee of $15 um, and maintaining the current fee of $11 per record for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2024. And with that, I move my amendment. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to amend, Chair Whitworth? No. Representative Zoneal? No. Brixie? No. Hood? Brabeck? No. Morris? No. Hurry? No. Stekloff? No. Weiss? Mardis? No. McKinney? No. Menser? No. Morgan? No. Morgan? No. Price? No. Skaggs? No. Snyder? No. Wilson? No. Leitner? Yes. Bolin? Yes. Green? Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cabot? Yes. DeBoer? Yes. Coon? Yes. Shooty? Steele? Yes. Madam Chair, you have 10 yeas, 16 nays, no pass. The amendment is not adopted. Thank you. Representative Purry now moves to report House Bill 4991 with recommendation as substitute H1. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representative Zoneal? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Purry? Yes. Steckloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Shooty? Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 10 nays, no pass. House Bill 4991 is reported with recommendation as substitute H1. Thank you. We now have a handful of bills, House Bill 4993 through 4997, that are sponsored by Representative Skaggs, most of which will change the sunset dates in statutes that include license fees administered by LARA. We will um, start with Marcus Coffin, and he will go through all the bills first, and then we'll ask questions after. Thank you. Welcome, Marcus. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Marcus Coffin with the House Fiscal Agency. To start with, I'll be speaking to the House Fiscal Agency analysis titled Occupational Licensing Fee Sunset Extensions, which pertains to House Bill 4993, the H-2 substitute. This bill would amend the State Licensing Fee Act to extend the sunset dates on 19 separate fees under that bill, which relate to professions regulated by the Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs. Those fees are currently set to sunset on September 30th of this year, and the sunset would be extended through 2027. Uh, the department projects that if the sunset is not extended, that bill would result in a $1.5 million annual reduction to their revenue. Uh, I don't know, do you want to do questions one at a time, or do you want to move on to the you next analysis? You can just analysis? move through all of them. Thank okay. you. Next, the analysis titled Securities Fees Sunset Extensions, House Bill 4994H2. This bill would amend the Uniform Securities Act, uh, which provides for regulation of the securities industry within the state, uh, also extending fee sunsets that are set to mature on September 30th, 2023, um, and extending that date through September 30th of 2027. Um, the total reduction, if those sunsets are not extended, is projected to total $7.8 million annually. The next analysis I will speak to is uh, the corporate filing fee sunset extensions. And this relates to three separate bills, House Bill 4995H2, House Bill 4996H2, and House Bill 4997H2. Um, those bills pertain to the Michigan Limited Liability Company Act, the Nonprofit Corporation Act, and the Business Corporation Act, respectively. Um, and all of those bills would extend sunsets that are set to mature on September 30th um, of this year to, through September 30th of 2027. Um, the fees pertain to, uh, fees, to fees that are remitted by businesses for various filings. Um, and the department currently estimates that the annual reduction, if the fees are not, if the sunsets are not extended, would total $9.5 million annually. And with that, I'd be happy to address any questions, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. I will first 
take questions on House Bill 4993. Are there any questions? Yes. Representative Steele. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, first of all, I'll, I just would like to say that I'll be noting, voting no on these implement, implementation budget bills. And um, I would like to just make a note that we were only given all of these bills only a couple days ago, which clearly doesn't allow enough time to be able to analyze and to respond appropriately. It's very frustrating on this side. Um, I just don't understand, I guess this is my question that I'm going to address to you, is why we don't give a break to the people that actually provide goods and services to our state and why we don't maintain these decreases of the sunset? Why are we increasing the sunset fees for all of these licenses, um, especially in these economic hard times when everything is more expensive? These are the people that actually bring tax dollars to our state and we're penalizing them for doing such a good job to be able to bring money to the state by increasing their fees. I really struggle with all of this. And the sunsets, I think they should be maintained and they should always come back here to be able to review what these sunset clauses are, not specifically to these bills, but just in general. But I do want to know why we're not maintaining these lower fees. Um, and I just have a quick statement. I think that we should probably do um, uh, a more thorough examination of the budget and um, maybe ethical questions that should be answered by our chair as well when we implement this $82 billion budget. It seems like there was enough money in this budget not to have to raise our fees. And so um, I have a question, and that might, was my statement, that this whole process has not been ethical with the chair um, in the position that she's in. Thank you. Representative Leitner. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this is just wrapping up and making sure I understand this. Um, sorry, is that's right in the way. Uh, <laughs> so anyways, I just wanna make sure that I'm understanding this. So what this amendment does now is it doesn't allow the decreases to come into play. Is that correct? In when they were supposed to in 2024, the end of this year. Uh, that's correct. So it the keeps the status quo correct. and then moves the, the goal to decrease it to 2027. Correct. As written okay. in current statute, the fees would decrease um, on September, after September 30th of this year. Under the substitutes for the bills, all of those fees would be extended at their present level through September 30th of 2027. Representative Kuhn, did you have a question? No. Representative Bolin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have a, just a, a clarification. When we uh, make, we're making reference to lost revenue, is it lost revenue, that total amount, based on if the increased amount does not go through? Right, that revenue loss would be what the department would be short based on their projections because when the budget was, Im well, these are budget implementation bills, so when the budget was created, the assumption was that they would these fees would continue at their current level. So if these fees were to go through that sunset and decrease to the lower amounts, that revenue loss, as it's titled, would represent the gap between what they would have under current level and what they would get under the new level. Okay, thank you. Do you have the number of what it would be if we actually implemented the decreases that were agreed to in previous budgets? Um, I don't have that handy, but I could provide that to you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Representative Fink. Thanks, Madam Chair. Just a couple of quick historical kind of technical questions. Um, I guess the first is, am I right that we've had record budgets in this state in the last three fiscal years? Um, it is my understanding that we have. Um, and the increase this year is uh, over, the increase for FY24 is substantial over FY23. Is, I mean, maybe you don't want to define substantial. Several billion dollars. Uh, I can't remember the exact number off the top of my head, but yes, it is a 
multi-billion dollar increase, I believe. So with that understanding and that background, do you know whether the state has ever eliminated or extended, in this case, sunsets uh, after the state has taken in record revenues? In other words, has the state ever elected to keep fees the same in the face of an all-time record budget? Representative, is this to this bill that we're talking about? Yes, doesn't this bill uh, push sunsets back several years? You're, you're talking about a big, broad stroke question. If you want to address the sunset for this one, that's fine. That's my question, is have we ever done a, a bill like this under circumstances like this? I can't recall every specific circumstance. Most of these sunsets that were are being addressed in these bills, the majority of them were implemented in 2003 and have subsequently been extended on a, I believe, four-year basis. So um, these fees were last extended in fiscal year 19. I can't recall what the exact revenue situation was like in fiscal year 19, whether that was a record year or not, but they have historically been extended several times. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Brixey. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you for that in historical information. Um, about the sunsets. Were the fees um, kept for this um, bill kept the same since 2003, or have they been changed at all over that time period? I believe they, I believe they are at all through, all the packages that I spoke to are at their, the same increase that they experienced in 2003, but I would have to double check to be certain, but I believe that is the case. Okay, so um, I, some of you know, but um, many of you don't know that I spent uh, 10 years as the treasurer of uh, Meridian Township, which is the eighth largest township um, in the state. And you know, in that time, I became what I would consider to be a fiscal conservative and really focused all my efforts on um, paying the bills and acting fiscally responsibly when because of being entrusted with taxpayer dollars. And um, part of that uh, fiscal responsibility is adjusting things with inflation. And unfortunately, term limits has created an environment where people wanna just kick the can down the road and nobody wants to do the right thing. We are experiencing inflation, which means that things cost more for us as well as for everyone else. And it's fiscally responsible to adjust our fees um, in accordance with in inflation. And I'll be uh, voting yes on this bill. Thank you, Representative Brixey. Seeing no further questions, Representative Skaggs moves to adopt substitute H2 to House Bill 4993. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H2 substitute, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representative O'Neill, yes. Brixey? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Hurry? Yes. Steckloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Munzer? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Kuhn? No. Schutte? Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 10 nays, no pass. The H2 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Steckloff moves to report House Bill 4993 with recommendation as substitute H2. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixey, yes. Hood, yes. Brabeck, yes. Morse, yes. Prairie, yes. Steckloff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Coon, no. Schutte, no. Steele. Oh. No. <laughs> Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 4993 is reported with recommendation as substitute H2. Thank you. Next, we'll take questions on House Bill 4994. Do we have any questions? Seeing there's no further questions, uh, Representative Skaggs moves to adopt substitute H2 to House Bill 4994. Will the clerk please take the roll? 
On the motion to adopt the H2 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representative O'Neill, yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Yes. Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Curry? Yes. Stackloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Kuhn? No. Schutte? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H2 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Weiss now moves to report House Bill 4994 <coughs> with recommendation as substitute H2. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representative Zoneal? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brayback? Yes. Morse? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Stackoff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Kuhn, no. Schutte, no. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 4994 is reported with recommendation as substitute H2. Thank you. Next, we'll take questions for House Bill 4995. Do we have any questions? Seeing no questions, Representative Skaggs moves to adopt substitute H2 to HB 4995. Clerk, please call the roll. On the motion to adopt the H2 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representative Zoneal? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Curry, yes. Stackloff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, yes. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. Ford, no. Kuhn, no. Schutte, no. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H2 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Martis now moves to report House Bill 4995 with recommendation as substitute H2. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Morse? Yes. Purry? Yes. Stackloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Kuhn, no. Schutte, no. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 4995 is reported with recommendation as substitute H2. Thank you. Next, we'll take questions for House Bill 4996. Any questions? Seeing no further questions, Representative Skaggs moves to adopt substitute H2 to House Bill 4996. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H2 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representative O'Neill, yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Curry? Yes. Stackloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? Yes. Bolin? No. Yes. Green? Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Fink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Kuhn, no. Schutte, no. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H2 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Menser now moves to report House Bill 4996 with recommendation as substitute H2. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representative O'Neill, yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Morse? Yes. Curry? Yes. Stackloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Spencer? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Kuhn? No. Schutte? Steel. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 4996 is reported with recommendation as substitute H2. Thank you. Next, we'll take questions for House Bill 4997. 
There being no questions, Representative Skaggs moves to adopt substitute H2 to House Bill 4997. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H2 substitute, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeVore? No. Coon? No. Shooty? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H2 is adopted. Thank you. Representative McKinney moves to report House Bill 4997 with recommendation as substitute H2. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Morse? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckoff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? Cabot? No. DeVore? No. Coon? No. Shooty? No. Steele? Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 4997 is reported with recommendation to substitute H2. Thank you. Next, we have House Bill 5000, sponsored by Representative Wilson, that amends the sunset date on the Fingerprinting Residence Act to ensure the Michigan State Police can continue to collect fees that pay for background checks. Marcus Coffin also covers the Michigan State Police budget, so I'll ask him to give another summary for this bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Speaking to the document titled Fingerprinting and Background Check Fee Sunset Extension, which pertains to House Bill 5000, the H-1 substitute, House Bill 5000 would amend 1935 PA-120, which regulates the fingerprinting of state residents to extend sunsets on fees collected by the Department of State Police for collecting fingerprints and processing fingerprints and running name-based criminal record checks. These fees are currently set to sunset on September 30th of this year, um, and if that sunset matures, the department could no longer collect any fee for these services. Um, the fees are currently set at $30 for the fingerprinting and $10 for a criminal record check. And the department estimates that if the sunset were to go into effect, they would have a $23 million annual deficit. Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing no questions, Representative Wilson moves to adopt the substitute H-1 to House Bill 5000. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H-1 substitute, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill, yes. Brixie, yes. Hood, Brabeck, yes. Morris, yes. Hurry, yes. Steckloff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, Bolin? Yes. Green? Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cabot? Yes. DeVore? Yes. Coon? Yes. Shooty? Yes. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, one nay, 10 passes. The H-1 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Snyder moves to report House Bill 5000 with recommendation as substitute H-1. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morris? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Steckloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? Yes. Bolin? Yes. Green? Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cabot? Yes. DeVore? Yes. Spoon? Yes. Shooty? Yes. Steele. No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, one nay, 10 passes. House Bill 5000 is reported with recommendation as substitute H1. Thank you. Next, I'll invite Kent Dell and Viola Wild and potentially Marcus Coffin back up here to join us for the next two bills. We'll be speaking about House Bill 5003 that's sponsored by Representative Morse that amends the mental health co code. And we'll also be speaking about House Bill 5004 that makes changes to the public health code that's sponsored by Representative Morse also. Thank you and welcome. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Kent Delve, House Fiscal Agency. 
I'm speaking to House Bills 5003 five, and 5004. Uh, these uh, bills both revise fees for uh, various services as well as um, increase or extend sunsets uh, throughout the mental health code and the public health code. Uh, specifically, I'd like to point out um, that the sunsets for uh, substance use disorder, uh, psychiatric hospitals and units, um, health facilities, nursing homes, and uh, ambulance QAP or quality, uh, quality assurance assessment taxes um, are extended in, this, in these bills to October 1st, 2027 with the exception of nursing homes and health facilities of extending the QAP collections until 2028. Additionally, this, these bills update the uh, definition of child or youth with special health care needs, raising the age from uh, under 21 to under 26. Um, and then lastly, this, these bills include a base facility licensure fee of $500 for, $500 for homes for the aged and require $2,000 application fees for initial homes for aged licensure applications. Uh, on the fiscal side, I'd like to point out that for Department of Health and Human Services, we don't expect any, uh, uh, have any fiscal impact on DHHS or local units of government. Um, however, without extending or eliminating the uh, sunset fees, uh, it will affect QAP collections, which have been built into the FY24 budget. Uh, similarly, uh, the appropriations, the uh, past appropriations, uh, include 17 million gross and 7.8 million general fund uh, for the cost of expanding the age from 21 to 26 for the children's special health healthcare services. And lastly, I'd like to note that for Leo, uh, Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity, uh, House Bill 5000. Four uh, increases eight radiation safety fees by 20%, and I am happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. First, we'll take questions on House Bill 5003, and we do have a question from Representative Bolin. Okay, all right. Any questions on House Bill 5003? Seeing no questions, Representative Morse moves to adopt the substitute H1 to House Bill 5003. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H1 substitute, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brayback? Yes. Morse? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Stecklaw? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Schutte? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H1 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Wilson moves to report House Bill 5003 with recommendation as substitute H1. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Yeah. Hood? Brayback? Morris? Yes. Yeah. Curry? Yes. Yeah. Stecklaw? Yes. Yeah. Weiss? Yes. Yeah. Martis? Yes. Yeah. McKinney? Yes. Yeah. Menser? Yes. Yeah. Morgan? Yes. Yeah. Price? Yes. Yeah. Skaggs? Yes. Yeah. Snyder? Yes. Yeah. Wilson? Yes. Yeah. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Eason? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Judy? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The bill is reported with recommendation. Thank you. Next, we'll take questions for House Bill 5004, and we do have a question from Representative Bolin. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I have a, a question made in reference to um, that it makes no difference. I'm trying to understand. I, I guess maybe this is really more for clarification. Under House Bill 5004, we are increasing the definition in the public health code of child or youth with special health care needs from 21 to 26. And so somewhere in the budget, that is going to be a gross increase, I would imagine, the state budget. But when you say there's uh, the impact, this is just based on the licensing fee or licenses that would be applied for. Is that correct? Um, the way that this bill works in extending that is uh, 
the FY24 budget that was recently passed includes the 17 million for the children's special health care services with this in mind. Um, that was, uh, this discussion occurred when we were talking about uh, increasing that age um, so that there's funding in there already uh, in the next appropriation year. So by not increasing it, that would be excess funds in FY24, um, but by in, but by increasing this, it'd be a net zero because it's already accounted for. Okay, but this is a budget implementation bill, and so we have to update the public health code in order to accommodate that. Correct. Yeah. So the the funds are appropriated. Um, updating this, yeah, would simply allow for the expenditure of those funds for those okay. individuals. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Are there any other questions, Representative Steele? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I actually have a question, and then I would like to do an amendment um, for my question when it comes time, if I just would like to say that right now. Well, you have a sub, okay. Donnie, but question first. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just was looking at the fees, and I know we touched, uh, it was discussed about the inflation and that we have to accommodate for the inflation. However, these fees are more than double, and I'm just curious on why they go from 100 to 233 to 100 to 233 to from 700 to 1567 and from 300 to 671. It seems more than um, the actual cost of inflation of these increases. If you could explain that, please. Um, so, ma'am, I can speak to just the, the factual basis of the budget has accounted for the increases in these fees. So it's built around the assumption that these fees will be increased. Uh, however, any policy related, I would have to either defer to the department. I can talk to the, are you talking about the LEO fees in the, in the first table? Um, the <coughs> fees for on page bill. two? Yeah, they're page number four for the inspection, reinspection, evaluation. Right. Yeah. Right. So. so if you can look at the analysis, the house fiscal analysis, if you look on page two, these fees that you're talking to are in the LEO budget. Um, and um, I have a table there, and it lists these eight fees that are for radiological equipment. And um, the statute hasn't, that you're looking at in the bill hasn't been changed since 1978. So these first, bill, these first fees, like the first veterinary or dental x-ray machine, the statute says the, um, the fee is $45 for the registration or renewal of an, a machine. But that's amount in 78, and then there's been the CPI um, increases since then. So if you can look in the first column of the table, it says the 1978 amount, which is in the bill that you'll see. The second, uh, actually the, the third column says current fee amount. And this is the actual fee today that um, people or businesses have to pay. And the real fee is 87.4. $87.40. So the businesses are actually paying $87.40 because the amount in the bill set up in uh, 1978 has been increased every year. So the real fee now is $87.40. And the proposed fee increase is a 20% increase from the current fee of $87.40. And it, so the proposed fee would be $104.88. And then there's eight fees that that similar process is, is going through. So the, the first column says 1978 regulatory, uh, statutory amount. That's what you're going to see in the bill. The second co uh, column of numbers is what those businesses are currently paying because it's been increased each year. The statute allows for that um, in this, that's being changed by the bill. And the last column is the proposed new fee. So while it looks like it's like 100% increase, it's really just a 20% over what the current fees are this year. And, and that by this 20% increase, it would only increase $500,000 in additional revenue to the state for the costs of administering these programs. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Seeing no further questions, Representative Morse moves to adopt substitute H3 to House Bill 5004. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H3 substitute, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixey? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Curry? Yes. Steckloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? 
Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cabot? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Schutte? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H3 is adopted. Thank you. Representative Steele is offering a substitute to House Bill 5004. Representative Steele, would you like to speak to your substitute? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. So my substitute would be just in, um, in a further conversation of my question is that I would like to main I would like to move to maintain the fees that are uh, printed between number one and number fourteen to remain the same as um, in the bill right now. So forty five to remain forty five, seventy five to remain seventy five, and a hundred to remain a hundred. I'm sorry, I'm I'm the wrong page. I'm going to re retract that. It's page number four, so it's one through. Um, 13, all those numbers to remain the same of 100, 100, 700, and 300. Um, I just sometimes I'm worried about the government having an insatiable appetite to spend tax dollars. Thank you. I move my um, motion. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H-4 substitute, Chair Whitwer? No. Representatives O'Neill? No. Brixie? No. Hood? Brabeck? No. Morse? No. Curry? Stackwalk? Weiss? No. Martis? No. McKinney? No. Menser? No. Morgan? No. Price? No. Skaggs? No. Snyder? No. Wilson? No. Leitner? Yeah. Bolin? Yeah. Green? Sloth? Yeah. Beeson? Yeah. Horton? Yeah. Fink? Cabot? Yes. DeBoer? Yes. Coon? Yes. Judy? Yes. Steele? Yes. Madam Chair, you have 11 yeas, 16 nays, no pass. The H-4 substitute is not adopted. Thank you. Representative O'Neill moves to report House Bill 5004 with recommendation as substitute H-3. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitwer? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Morse? Yes. Curry? Yes. Stecklock? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yes. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. Cavett? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Schutte? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 5004 is reported with recommendation as substitute H3. Thank you. The last bill we have today is for House Bill 5007. It's sponsored by Representative McKinney that makes several adjustments to the Natural Resources and Environmental Protection Act. Austin Scott and Michael Knossen will also go, will go over these changes made in this bill. Welcome, Austin. Good morning. I'm Austin Scott from the House Fiscal Agency and I'm going to speak to the H3 substitute for House Bill 5007. This substitute would extend the sunset on uh, six fees that are um, that go to support the budget for the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy and another fee that goes to support the budget for the Department of State. There is a fee increase in one of the Eagle fees and a fee increase in the Department of State fee as well uh, that I'll speak to specifically. But generally speaking, that's what we're dealing with in this bill. If you take a look at the HFA summary, you'll see each of these fees listed out individually. The first one I'll take, groundwater discharge permit fee, the, the substitute that is uh, will, will be before the uh, committee this morning would increase the groundwater discharge permit fee uh, and you see the, the increase in range there. This increase was built into the uh, enacted budget that begins October 1st for the coming fiscal year and the fee increase is projected to generate $680,000 of additional revenue that again is included in Eagle's budget for the coming fiscal year. That fee, in addition to the other five listed below, sewer expedited permit fee, air quality fee, hazardous waste generator, or uh, transport treatment storage or disposal, also known as the solid waste surcharge, electronic device manufacturer registration, 
uh, and electronic device recycler registration. Each of those fee sunsets uh, would, are extended, uh, sunset extensions are included in the substitute, extending the subset, sunset on each of those bills from the 1st of October of this year out to the 1st of October uh, four years from now. Last item I'll speak to in the um, bill that's at the top of page two in the summary. Again, I mentioned that there is uh, the extension of fee sunset uh, on fee, uh, the record lookup fee collected by the Department of State. Uh, my colleague Michael earlier this morning spoke to House Bills 4990-4991. The sunset extension and the fee increase in this bill mirrors that of 4990 and 4991, both of which were primarily Department of State bills. You see there under fiscal impact a snapshot of the revenue that's generated for Eagle uh, by the fees in question. Uh, the fees in this bill specifically, the Eagle fees, uh, generally generate about $20.1 million in revenue for the Department of e each year. So were the fees to sunset and go away, that would be uh, a snapshot of the revenue loss for the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy. I'm happy to take questions at the Chair's discretion. Thank you. We do have one question, and it's from Representative Beeson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thanks for being here today. Um, when your fees are based, that groundwater discharge permit, uh, October 1st, 2023, if I'm looking at it, is one point, is that, so that's a 1.1, is that what it says? You're referring to the- The groundwater, the, yeah. Like the, the collection you said, it's just about $21, $21 million altogether. Groundwater discharge specifically generates just under four and a half million. All of the Eagle fees included in this summary generate about 20 million collectively together. Okay, and uh, didn't we have a 44% increase in this budget this year? In the Eagle budget um, for the current year is, was a decrease over last year. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I, I misspoke, Representative For Next fiscal year will be smaller than it is this current fiscal year we are still in. And these are for four years, these fees, right, that you're you, putting in place? Usually the sunset cycle is typically four years. In the case of each of these, they were extended to 2023, four years ago. The proposed extension, it would be out to 2027. And did we raise the fees back in, because uh, you were probably here, because uh, did we raise the fees then, d d like this, double? Uh, I can give you each one. Groundwater discharge permit fee was last raised in December of 2015. Sewer expedited permit fee has never been increased. And then the next four, air quality, solid waste surcharge, and the electronic device fees were all last raised the 1st of October 2015. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have one more question from Representative Fink. Thank you, Madam Chair. In my question, I, and I recognize you're not here asking us to make these adjustments. You're just trying to give us the ground uh, on which we're operating. So my question would be, as we think about whether to make this judgment, does House Fiscal have some kind of forecast that would suggest circumstances would be different in 2027? In other words, is there, I, mean, I heard you say that it's been a four year cycle. Does House Fiscal have anything to say about kind of what they expect the revenues and budget life to be like in 2027 yet? Uh, my short answer is I'm not aware of that's, uh, such a forecast. Um, more specifically, of course, we do have the Revenue Estimating Conference twice a year that is looking at revenues uh, on a periodic basis, I should say, that are realized by the state uh, and expected to come in for the state. So short answer, four years out, there isn't one that I'm aware of. Um, I would yield to our economic experts and our agency to correct me if that's not accurate, but that is sort of a snapshot of my understanding. Thank you, are there any other questions? Seeing no further questions, Representative McKinney moves to adopt substitute H3 to House Bill 5007. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to adopt the H3 substitute, Chair Whitware? Yes. Representatives O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Yes. Hood? Brabeck? Yes. Morse? Yes. Hurry? Yes. Stackloff? Yes. Weiss? Yes. Martis? Yes. McKinney? Yes. Menser? Yes. Morgan? Yes. Price? Yes. Did you say pass? Yes. Skaggs? Yes. Snyder? Yeah. Wilson? Yes. Leitner? No. Bolin? No. Green? Slaw? No. Beeson? No. Horton? No. Fink? No. 
Cavett? No. DeBoer? No. Coon? No. Judy? No. Steele? No. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. The H3 is adopted. Thank you. We do have two amendments to this bill, the first being uh, Representative Beeson. He is offering an amendment to House Bill 5007. Would you like to speak to your amendment? Yes, Madam Chair, I would like to speak to my amendment. Uh, thanks for letting me offer this amendment. This is on, uh, the amendment is on page two, basically, with all the uh, increase. The first one would be a facility going from 3650 to 7500, which more than doubles the cost to uh, the facility. The next one is amendment on page two with the resident, which goes from 1800, uh, from 1500. The next one is on uh, the same page two, line seven, where we go from, uh, from 250 to 300. And the last one is on page two, which the amendment uh, goes from 240 back to 200. Uh, I just really look at <laughs> some of these costs. This is bit for the next four years for these facilities. So imagine dropping another uh, more than double the cost of, to your facility right now for the fee and uh, adding that into our, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's just something about this screams like look out for businesses in our state. And I'm, I'm really worried about the projection of do we have this as a reason why some businesses are like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, it sounds crazy, but businesses do close up. My business did close up. The regulation from the state is ridiculous to these small businesses. And this is, I, I'm really, mm, I'd like to uh, offer my amendment, uh, or move my amendment, please. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to amend, Chair Whitworth? No. Representative O'Neill, Brixie? <laughs> Hood? Brabeck? No. Morris? No. Curry? No. Steckloff? No. Weiss? Martis? No. McKinney? No. Menser? No. Morgan? No. Price? No. Skaggs? No. Snyder? No. Wilson? No. Leitner? Yes. Bolin? Yes. Green? Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cabot? Yes. DeBoer? Yes. Coon? Yes. Judy? Yes. Steele? Yes. Madam Chair, you have 11 yeas, 16 nays, no pass. The amendment is not adopted. Thank you. The next amendment will be offered by Representative Bolin on House Bill 5007. Would you like to speak to your amendment? Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is goes in line with my amendment uh, in the Secretary of State's budget, but it would amend uh, page 20, line 16, page 21, line 23, page 22, line 27, page 24, line five, striking out $15 per record and adding for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2024, the fee is $11 per record, therefore maintaining the current fee. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Will the, thank you. Will the clerk please take the roll? On the motion to amend, Chair Whitworth? No. Representative O'Neill? No. Brixie? No. Hood? Brabeck? No. Morris? No. Purdy? No. Steckloff? No. Weiss? No. Martis? No. McKinney? No. Menser? No. Morgan? No. Price? No. Skaggs? No. Snyder? No. Wilson? No. Leitner? Yes. Bolin? Yes. Green? Slaw? Yes. Beeson? Yes. Horton? Yes. Fink? Yes. Cavett? Yes. DeBoer? Yes. Coon? Yes. Shooty? Yes. Steele? Yes. Madam Chair, you have 11 yeas, 16 nays, no pass. The amendment is not adopted. Thank you. Representative Brabeck moves to report House Bill 5007 with recommendation for the substitute H3. Will the clerk please call the roll? On the motion to report, Chair Whitworth? Yes. Representative O'Neill? Yes. Brixie? Hood, Brabeck, Morris, Curry, yes. Steckloff, yes. Weiss, yes. Martis, yes. McKinney, yes. Menser, yes. Morgan, yes. Price, yes. Skaggs, yes. Snyder, yes. Wilson, yes. Leitner, no. Bolin, no. Green, Slaw, no. Beeson, no. Horton, no. Pink, no. Cabot, no. DeBoer, no. Coon, no. Judy, no. Steele. Madam Chair, you have 16 yeas, 11 nays, no pass. House Bill 5007 is reported with recommendation as substitute H3. Thank you. Uh, we do have three cards to read in today. Uh, Sergeant Travis Fletcher from the Michigan State Police supports bills 4990 and 5000. And uh, the Michigan Chemistry Council opposes bill 5007. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming today. It sh it I was hoping that this would get done by 10 o'clock, so I really appreciate everything. Seeing no further business, the House Appropriation Committee stands adjourned.